there's never been a better time to have Sirius XM. With even more exclusive content, with over 150 channels in your vehicle, including the widest, deepest variety of music, ad-free. Root for your team. Get news. Listen to whatever makes you laugh. And hear all about your favorite stars. Your Platinum Plan offer includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels filled with music and enjoy a favorite shows with Sirius XM Video. Thousands of hours of shows and performances on demand. What you love is on now. We're talking audiophile and we're talking audiophile grade speakers. And today it's all about one of the world's foremost loudspeaker manufacturers. Yes, the brand known as Focal. We've got product expert Nick Wingate in the studio with us, as well as obviously there's some big news from this from a Canadian standpoint, a new distribution partner. This is CMA Connected presented by Sirius XM, Focal. And it starts now. What's going on, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to another CMA Connected presented by Sirius XM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Now, audiophile is no secret, my favorite category for the year. And we're going, we're, you know, every single day, a new brand. And today we've landed on, well, let's be honest, a favorite amongst you guys, all you installers and technicians and fabricators and store owners. Focal is a beloved brand, and rightfully so. They have such a rich history in the audio world, not only providing, um, top of the line exquisite product in pro category in home category in now in wall category and of course car audio so of course we're going to be talking all the high level goodness all the cone technology this is what we're in for so strap in let's start by first bringing in their new canadian partner in distribution our good friends over at trends electronics mr grant mcfadder what's going on grant mr ben how are you sir I'm pretty pumped today. Uh, we're talking Focal, we're talking technology and cone material and all that good stuff. And uh, obviously, an opportunity to sit down with you and kind of go over this new partnership that was recently announced between Trends Electronics being appointed the new exclusive Canadian distributor for Focal Car Audio. I want to give you every opportunity to tell us what this is all about. Well, it's something we've been working on in the background for for a few years, um, just working back channels and stuff like that, and see what's what opportunities there were about getting full cal. Obviously, we've been a big supporter of Orca with every other brand they do with Moscone and Gladen, Illusion, Black Hole. Um, so this was, you know, a natural fit for us to uh, round out our lineup. So we're like super super stoked to have this product. It's well, when it gets here, we'll be super stoked. But we're super stoked to be appointed the distributor for it. Well, I'll tell you, there's a couple of questions that uh, I've been kind of preparing here for this particular opportunity. You know, let's establish something. You know, Trends as a distributor has been in business, you know, a long time. And uh, for those of us that are unaware of the other segments that Trends distributes audio in, you know, high-end audio is a specialty at Trends Electronics, isn't it? Yeah, we 60% of our business is custom home, and we do really high-end in-wall and in ceiling um speakers from sonance we do cambridge audio which is a crazy brand that we you know do really really well with so high-end audio is in the dna even going back to the beginning with phoenix gold like we put that you know and put that brand on the map in canada that was back in the day you were selling thousand dollar amplifiers that were 22 watts a channel you know like crazy mm -hmm. so well, high-end cool. audio is is not new to us and uh, certainly this is this is something that we've been working on a long time. We're like, again, couldn't be happier. So what exactly are the rules of engagement here? Were we talking just car audio or are there other parts? Just help us detail the exact deal. So the there's more to it than just the car audio. The car audio, we're the distributor for Canada. Um, so we'll have all the inventory here. 
And then on the uh, the rest of the there's other full cal brands we're dealing with as well. We're doing CI, we're the rep rep group for their CI products or their custom install products across Canada as well. So there'll be existing guys kept on, and there'll be our existing rep force as well, all trained actually last week. So that'll be uh, brand new as well. And then uh, in BC only, uh, we have the entire province for all Focal products. So uh, home audio, headphones, um, you name it. So BC, it's everything that's under the Focal umbrella. And um, CI for the rest of the country, and then uh, if there is an opportunity for CI dealers that say they've been building a house and they're, they've got, you know, 50 pairs of uh, 300 series speakers going into a guy's house, but the guy wants a pair of Sopra twos for his uh, main listening room, we can accommodate that as well. But that's not the rule. It's, it's it'll be an exception. So, yeah. so we're stoked, man. It's, it's a fantastic line. You talk about a company that's, you know, Chris Shaw, we've been dealing with Chris Shaw on the trading side. We've got, you know, the legend coming up right after this with Nick Wingate, uh, the guys in France, uh, Ludwig, Jan, Pierre, um, and uh, Wesley, all been fantastic. And then obviously up to, up to the ownership group or the management group with uh, Arno and Cedric, been fantastic through this whole process. All right. Well, uh, my last question to you, and it's more of a statement. You know, on, I, I've had the opportunity to speak with so many of our top fabricators, installers, shops, dealers, you know, and Focal is one of those brands that many, many, many hold near and dear. You know this, I think this is a known fact, they're very passionate about the brand. They themselves run the product in their own vehicles. Well, you know, what is the outlook, um, knowing that you're accepting this type of responsibility, this type of heritage of this brand that is so close to so many people's hearts when it comes to, you know, audio? I think it was one of the, the message we, when we met with the people at Focal was, you know, the, the brand is more important than anything else. So, you know, and the prestige of the brand, that's the important thing is making sure that it's held to the, the level that it's been throughout the world. I mean, you've got 160 different countries selling this product and it is by far the widest lineup of car audio products top to bottom. And I think in every category they do, I think every category they do could be an audiophile session itself, you know, access is probably best in class for that level of product slate fiber as you go on but uh i know why it's i mean you just look at this stuff it's it's gorgeous i mean it's it, it it's, the sad part is this is going behind a grill in a lot of places you're never going to see it but i mean you talk about man jewelry that's just like the derek uh our guy that's running the switches over here was drooling over this earlier you got a three inch voice coil on a six and a half inch woofer it's the performance, the, the design. There's nothing left. <clears throat> um, should I say it's half-assed? There's nothing half-assed about anything in this product. It's detail, 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 packaging, the whole work. The whole presentation is first class. I think a lot of it comes with the proud, uh, uh, the, the pride of ownership, I think, is a, is a term that comes to mind when it comes to Focal as well. You're part of a, a legacy of audio engineering and, and innovation. And I, I'm not the one to speak to that, but I've learned a lot talking to our next guest. I think it's time to bring him in. Uh, we're, we've imported him, him in from the US because, well, we are talking about the upper echelon. I know you mentioned, you know, uh, uh, some of the the different levels. Um, look at that. Some of the levels, um, but we're gonna bring in Nick Wingate and we're gonna ask him about all the high-end offering that Focal has to offer. So let's bring in Nick. Nick, what's going on, Nick? Uh, my day's going better than yours is so my far. Day, it happens. <laughs> I mean, this is it. This is live broadcast. It happens. <laughs> uh, technical difficulties beyond our control. Yeah. Good morning, sir. How are you this morning? <laughs> Nick, it doesn't uh, look as hot in Texas today. What? <laughs> there we go. We're back. Uh, is off. All right. <laughs> all right. So we're quasi back, but most importantly, most importantly, what we're talking about is the fact that, and the, the message that I wanted to get across is even leading up to the show, we had messages from dealers, all right? And this is a brand that unlike any brand, and I'll, I'll be the first to say that people are very vocal about their passion for this brand and, their, and how their relationship with this brand is the foundation of some of their businesses, okay? Yep. So obviously there was a little bit of concern 
nervosity at any change, any major change when it comes to your business relationships and all this type of stuff. So, you know, it was very important that we gave uh, Grant and, and Trends an opportunity to explain exactly what was going on. And now bringing you in here to kind of refresh everybody on really the, the strength and the, the, the points that make Focal what they are. Um, I'd like to give you an opportunity to add to what Grant has said already. Well, I mean, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going to right now that I'm going to steal uh, what he just said, and I'm going to use this. The, uh, the Focal does not half-ass anything. Now, I don't care what it is, uh, whether it's entry-level auditor all the way to, I mean, let's face it, all the way to the Grand Utopia EMs uh, in home audio. They, they do not skimp. They don't cut corners. They, you know, they, they are all about the reproduction of music at such an exacting level that it would make any pain in the audio file happy to have it in their home or their car or their studio. But it would also make the average everyday world consumer tickled to death to be able to listen to it. And, you know, it's not easy to make the audio files happy. But if you can make the audio files happy, you can make anybody happy. Mm. And so, you know, that's that's where they are. They they literally build everything to that standard, you know, which is live music, the reproduction of live music. And when you're talking about the lineage of the company, you know, over 40 years of being in business, uh, being in 160 countries around the world. It's uh, so like we were talking about last night. You know, when you're talking about the product line that whether it's home, car, headphone, in walls, you know, they have everything in those categories. They have product that is the best in the world or it is amongst the best in the world. And for one company to be able to say that in every category they have something like that, that's a hell of a statement. Because normally you think about one company who builds home audio, let's say, who builds home speakers. They can take all of their resources, all of their engineering prowess, and they can put it into that one category. And can they build something extraordinary? Sure, absolutely. But when you're talking about a company that has categories in pro, home, car, headphones, in walls, you know, and you've got product that is exceptional in every single one of them, that is unheard of in the audio world. I mean, Ben, who else does that? Yeah, you know, we, we you you had made that comment last night and it made me thinking. So I did some Googling and really there is nobody else that does quite cover, you know, at that level, all these categories. And you should add in their motorcycle as well. And, and exactly. And, and you know, and now it's, you know, motorcycles and UTVs and ATVs. And, and, and now here we come with outdoor, outdoor speakers, which is going to be really cool. Amazing. Amazing. Um, all right. Yeah. Nick, uh, we brought you in for a purpose. We're talking audio files this month. Uh, right. What are we going to be covering today within the full cal line today, specifically? Uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about in profile, uh, K two power, flax, and uh, something that I really enjoy talking about now: slate fiber, the, the new drivers right. that just were released this year. Uh, those of you who have an opportunity to listen to them, please do. I think you are going to be floored by the mm -hmm. level of fidelity that you get out of these speakers for this kind of money. Okay, um, so we're starting at I Utopia. Heard, I haven't we're heard. We're going to end that slate fiber. Yeah, okay. slate fiber comes in just below flax. Gotcha. Um, okay. And it's just tremendous. I mean, it really is. By hey. the way, I just want to say, I want to comment before, you know, Grant pulled out that Utopia M driver, that, I, that right there. Uh, you know, I've already told you about my affinity for them red fans and those, you know, amps that we've talked about in, on other yeah. episodes. But that red ring kind of is up there, too. They kind of go together. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just yeah. saying. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's go ahead and set you guys up. There's a presentation here. You know, when it comes to Focal, you know, you dealers out there, if you're, if you're you, you know, many already know this. You, want, you might want to pay attention to what Nick's angle is. But this is a company forged in technology and engineering and it's very important mm -hmm. to understand how each series is set up with specific technologies and materials and all that good stuff and uh, that's where we're about to go through so let's go ahead and set that up for you guys and away you go well thank you sir 
Um, Grant, do me a favor, pull that 10WM back out you just had. So uh, when you look at this driver, okay, and you look at the frame, you look at the cone, you look at how this is constructed, um, this is two and a half years worth of research and development and $2 million in funding to build something like this. Now, that's an awful lot of money to be put into just to build a set of speakers, a line. But you take a look at this driver. I mean, you're looking at a speaker. That that one particular 10-inch sub works in six-tenths of a cubic foot all the way to one cubic foot. Uh, depending on the enclosure design and the car, it'd be 3 dB down somewhere around 35 hertz. It has 18 millimeters of X max. It's tremendous technology. It handles a ton of power. And the distortion levels are just ridiculously low. And that is indicative of the entire line. You look at that subwoofer right there, and every mid bass and mid range basically looks almost just like it. And everybody that I've talked to when we're talking about the M profiles, you know, there's the eight, that's an eight WM. You look at that driver and you look at the 10, you know, everybody's like, that's ridiculous. You know, that they spend the money on this because it's aesthetics. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's not aesthetics. That frame is built that way for a particular reason, because of the way that it literally eliminates the back wave off of the driver that might reflect and come back and hit the back of the cone. It won't do it in any way, shape or form. That material that, that is built out of, I mean, it's a non-magnetic, non-resonant material. And it's, it's an amazing you know, set of speakers. Um, there's a reason why it's called the best in the world. And there's nothing else out there like this in any way, shape or form. Uh, it was like I was telling Ben last night, that those of you who had opportunity to listen to this, I'll just reiterate it. Yeah. Are there speakers out there that cost more? Yes. Are there speakers out there that sound better? No. And I will stake my reputation on it right now. I, over the past 30 years, you know, me being involved in car audio and home audio, I have yet to hear anything that plays with this level of fidelity with this level of volume, with this level of dynamic range. I mean, it's basically the best of everything that you could possibly ask for. You know, in pro, and it's just tremendous technology. Um, you know, Grant's showing you the, ten, the TBM tweeter right now. You're looking at a tweeter that has a free air resonance if I, below 300 hertz. And yes, you heard me right. It has a free air resonance below 300 hertz. Now, right now, somebody's thinking, oh, I can play it to 900 hertz. No, no, <laughs> no, please don't. But you can play it to 2000 hertz without a problem. And so when you're talking like that tweeter, you can play it to 2000 hertz. Okay. The 6WM, you can play it all the way to 6,000 hertz. The 8WM, you can play all the way to 5,000 hertz. And the 3WM, you can play to 10,000 hertz. And the reason behind that is because of the shape of the cone and what you're looking at right here. There is a reason why Focal builds product the way they do. And it's this formula right here. It is how they build every single solitary cone in the entire lineup, it has to meet these three criteria. One, the mass has to be extremely low. Why? Because it has to stop and start as fast as possible. That's the acceleration capability. It has to be extremely rigid or stiff. So why does it have to be that way? Well, because if you think about a plastic polypropylene cone, and we've all played with them, you know how you can sit there and literally take your finger and you could put dimples in them and just push on them. Do that with a focal cone and it won't do it. Well, there's a reason why. So the cones don't flex because if the cones flex, you have a distortion that shows up. So it has to be extremely strong. It has to be extremely light and it has to be very well damped, which it can't ring. 
So when you bring these three all together, you're creating a, a situation in which the wave formation that the cone is going, that your driver is going to produce is as distortion free and as neutral as possible. And that's the beauty behind all of the sandwich cones that they build. And, and you, you take a look right here. You'd like the three ways. You look at the average bandwidth, you know, uh, is 250 hertz to 2,500 hertz, you know, and, and the X max is like two millimeters. And then you look at the mid base is 40 hertz to 2,500 hertz, and it has six millimeters of X max. And if you take a look at the, you know, the subs, you look at a 30 hertz to 250 hertz with a buttload of X max, 20 millimeters. That's a heck of a lot. And for all of these drivers, you know, there's a reason why they do what they do, be it the W sandwich cones, the flax cones, slate fiber cones, and the Kevlar cones. Okay. They are all basically built the exact same way. Okay. The W cone and the flax cone and the K2 power cone specifically, they are basically two and three layers brought together. Okay. Now, when you look at this picture, if you look off to the left, that person is literally building these cones by hand. Okay, when it comes to W sandwich cones and K2 power cones and flax subwoofer cones, they must be built by hand. They cannot be built by a machine. They've tried. They'd love to automate it and cut the cost on this down, but it's not possible. You know, if you can see, you can look to the left <clears throat> in the bottom left hand corner. You see on the table right there, and I'm willing to bet that's uh, that's probably K2 Power. It's probably Kevlar. What you're looking at right there is the sheets that have been formed already by those dies. You see on the left, those aluminum inverted dies. What their person's doing is they're taking a sheet of either Kevlar or Utopian material, and there's those dies are literally, they're taking the material and they're pressing down on that die to form and shape that cone. And, and there's numerous people that do this, okay? And sometimes it takes up to 15 minutes or 20 minutes, depending on what size cone. If it was like back in the day when they were building a 16 inch subwoofer out of Kevlar, it would take literally an hour to build the cone because it was such a pain in the you know what to work on. Uh, the average six and a half inch, I've seen somebody, you know, average time has been 10, 12 minutes to build one. There is, there used to be, I have not seen her lately. And I don't know if she's retired or not. There was a lady there who could take any Kevlar cone, literally, except for the big subs, and she could literally do it in three and five minutes. And she was tremendous. Unbelievable in her ability to build these things as quick as possible and have them literally be flawless. Okay, When you're looking at whether it's K2 Power or, or Utopia, depending on which sub, if it's a sub cone, it'll be three layers, if it's a mid base, it'll be three layers, and sometimes it'll be two layers on a mid range, depending on what they're after and the weight they're looking for and how low it's going to play. So when you look at any of the Kevlar cones, you put them in your hands, you look at any of the Kevlar drivers, you literally can put it on his side and you can literally see what we're talking about. It's tremendous technology. Uh, they've been building it for a long time, and I and I think that once you hear what the results are from the technology. You get it. You understand it. it is completely different from anything anybody else does. Okay. Flax is built the exact same way in that it is a sandwich cone. But flax is a little bit different from the Utopia cones and from the Kevlar cones in that it's not based off a of petroleum product. You know, Kevlar comes from oil. Fiberglass comes from oil. And that's the main component in, in the uh, W sandwich cones. Flax is material that actually is found in nature. There's There are numerous flax plants that grow all over the world. And it turns out the absolute best in the world grows in France. And imagine that it grows in France. Oh, the French are so proud about that. <laughs> so, but it's true. And it's yeah, they, look, they look all over the world for that material and they found it in their own backyard. Right there in their own backyard. Yeah. Can we go back a slide, please? Yep. Yeah, possible. Okay. So the reason that this was chosen is, is there's a little story behind it, and I want to go there because it's really interesting 
because they were beginning to look at how to phase out a material known as polyglass. And polyglass is a paper cone that has microscopic hollow spheres of glass impregnated in a rosin that they literally spray on the material. It's been around since 1984. It's a great product. Uh, um, it's It sounds really, really good. But recently, in the last 10 years, the engineers at Focal let the powers that be know that they cannot make it any better. It's not possible. So, you know, the, the, the thought was that we need to find something new that was could possibly replace it. And we can make something closer to how K2 power sounds. Now that's a tall order. Uh, and the engineers were given a task and they, and again, they wanted something that was going to be green and that it was going to be a living plant. Like, you know, papers comes from the trees, you know, and, and so they were looking for something based off of maybe cellulose or some type of plant. And they looked all over the world and lo and behold, like Brand said, they found it in their own backyard. And it's really unique in how this came about. When they first examined the fibers themselves, they found out that the, they were hollow, as you can see right here. It was a, it's a hollow fiber. And it has an average diameter of 20 microns. Now, that's human hair, folks. That's tiny. Well, it turns out that the fibers that they use in K2 power that create the weave in the, in the K2 power cones is the exact same diameter. And those fibers are hollow. So what, what, what does that tell us? Well, that means that the mass is not going to be that great because it's a hollow fiber and that they can create a very, very dense weave because of the size of the, of the fibers themselves. You take a look at the rigidity. Remember the three things we have to have, you know, low mass, it's got to be extremely stiff and it's got to be very well damped. Well, they took a look at how uh, the fibers in this flax plant that grows in France is, and it turns out it is about 80% of what K2 power Kevlar is. And it's very similar to carbon fiber and how it will bend. Carbon fiber, we all know if you bend it too much, it's going to crack. But you can bend it some, which means that you were going to be able to shape this into a cone. Because if it was too brittle, it wouldn't do it. Well, so there's two parts of it. The third <coughs> is a damping. Well, it's 80% cellulose. Well, what's the best damping product in the world for cones? Paper. So there we go. So they found something that was just basically about 80% of Kevlar is. Now we go to the next slide. And so here you here they are. They found this growing, you know, in the northern part of France. And as you can see in that picture in the upper right hand corner, this stuff looks like human hair when they get it. And so what happens is they take that raw material. And if anybody's used raw fiberglass, you guys all know what it's like to create a weave, which is exactly what they did. They created a weave and they decided that, you know what, since this is so similar to Kevlar and, and K2 power and how it looks and how it reacts, we're going to build the cone the exact same way and see what happens. And lo and behold, here's the, this is what happened. You've got something that is amazing in its sound and it's and i agree it's 80 percent of k2 power it literally is it sounds absolutely amazing but they also found out that it has a very very smooth sonic signature it is amazing what flax sounds like for the price point it's absolutely phenomenal and how it works and how it sounds and it's one of the most popular selling uh, car audio speakers in the world it is also one of the most popular selling home audio speakers in the world. Um, I don't mind telling you, um, Focal builds a hell of a lot of home stuff and I got a chance to listen to all of it. And my favorite speaker in the entire line is known as a Canta 3. That is a Flax 3 way, it has a pair of Flax 8s, a Flax 6.5 inch mid range. And it has a beryllium tweeter in it. They retail for about nine to ten thousand dollars a pair. 
That is the, my favorite speaker for Cal Bills. Period. Bar none. I don't care what it cost. And everybody kind of looks at me like, why? I said, because it sounds like the real thing. It sounds so you know amazing in the base. The mid-range is smooth and clean and detailed. Of course, a brilliant tweeter is amazing. But for $10,000, $9,000, $10,000 U.S., you can't beat it. You cannot find another speaker anywhere in the world that sounds like it. The same thing can be said for the 165 FXC in this line, which is a six and a half inch two-way. Uh, it's the top of the line, six and a half inch two-way. I am a huge fan of that speaker. That's a mid mid-base driver Grant has in his hand. That speaker right there, Dollar for dollar, it is absolutely fantastic what that can sound like in a car when it is done correctly, when it's installed correctly, and you have done all your homework, you've damped the doors, you've done everything correctly. That is a phenomenal sounding system. And I will tell you, I don't give a rat's rear end who manufactures what. You can put any speaker, $150 either side of the price, the price of that speaker. You will choose that one right there. I promise. It's absolutely phenomenal in what it sounds like. I, Talking I about the, 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 the stuff. Stuff. I got right. a chance to, I was in a dealer and I was a dealer in Toronto a few weeks back and they've got a theater room. Uh, it's at uh, Altered Sound in, in Oakville. And they've got a, a theater room and their, uh, their main theater room has got 300 series in walls in it. Uh, which is the flax, the flax cones. And my God, they put uh, Imagine Dragons live concert uh, on their big projector. Uh, they're using all Focal speakers, uh, all the front stages, all the 300 series, and then they're using 100 series in the rears and, and the, uh, the Atmos uh, effect speakers. <laughs> my God, did it sound like you were sitting front row at that concert. Like, amazing, amazing. It, it's what flax gives you. It's, it yeah. sounds live. It really does. Um, I, I can't speak. I, I, you know, the technology that goes into this, it's, it's, it's amazing. As you can see right here, depending on what you're building, whether it's a mid range or whether it's a woofer, you can see that it's based upon the thickness of the cone materials, whether it's the, the size, the Roja cell, which is the white material, material you see right there or whether it's the thickness of the uh the top uh material which is fiberglass and then the middle piece you can see that is the flax material itself and that's how they build it uh, it can be in in some cases it is semi-automated uh, it is these drivers are not 100 hand built the, the subs are the subwoofers are they have to be um because they can't they can't duplicate it with a machine they've tried but the three and a half and the six and a half inch uh, mid-base drivers, and the, they are uh, semi-automated. There's still a lot of hand, <laughs> still a lot of people with their hands making sure that these things are done correctly. Uh, but they can build about, uh, the last time I checked, um, there was about three to five that could be done every 10 minutes. And, and it may be faster than that now. But it, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. All right, slate fiber. Um, Grant, do you have a slate fiber driver? I do not have a slate fiber driver here yet. Okay. <clears throat> they are tell Keith he's, he's, well, tell Keith he's on my list. He's on he's on my crap list because he didn't have a slate fiber cone for us. <laughs> um, Keith McCumber's li listening. I know he is. Love you, brother. Thank you for all the help the drivers. <laughs> um, Slate fiber is quite the interesting story. Um, it came about uh, because of the home audio line. Uh, originally, uh, they were looking for, again, a material that was going to re basically take place of polyglass. And they were, you know, looking at where flax came in at a price point, it wasn't quite where it could be, where they wanted it to be, uh, because they were wanting something that would be an entry level line at a certain price point. And that price point is like $800 to $2,500 US retail for you know, a pair of stereo speakers in center channels. And so they were looking for 
a material that would be, some, again, similar to what flax is, uh, but doesn't cost near as much. But they wanted the performance to be really close to it. And again, that's a very, very tall order. Uh, when you're, you're, you're asking the engineering team that, oh, well, you got through it flax. Guess what? I need you to go back and take a look at something else because I need something better, but I need it, you know, than what we're originally talking about when it comes to polyglass, but I need it to be better and I need it at this price point. Oh, you know, uh, yeah, thanks. Really appreciate it. Uh, you know, one of the engineers that I've talked to about this, they were like, oh, gee, really? <laughs> we're going to have to do this. And so they, again, they were starting to take a look at what was available to them all these different types of materials and, um, you know, it, it, aluminum, uh, some of the polypropylenes, you know, I, I mean, I can go on. And what they took a long, hard look at was carbon fiber, you know, and one of the things about carbon fiber that we all know, it is extremely strong up to a point because if you apply too much pressure to it, it'll crack. But the strength was there. Carbon fiber can be extremely lightweight. Anybody that's played around with carbon fibers in cars, they know carbon fiber is extremely lightweight and it's extremely strong, but you can't bend it. Not really. So the question then became is, OK, so if we want to look at carbon fiber. How do we incorporate it into a type of material that we can literally form into the, a cone? So. They ended up actually taking a look at recycled ground up carbon fiber. How about that? And they mixed it with what is known as a thermoplastic polymer. And which anybody knows what, you know, thermoplastics or polymers are. It's basically a rubberized compound is what it is of some kind. And so what they did is you mix the two together. And you end up, again, with the, 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 the three key elements you have to have for any focal cone. It's extremely lightweight. Carbon fiber is. It's extremely strong. Carbon fiber is. And it has to be very well damped. Well, that thermopolymer, that increases the damping. And guess what? You can form a cone out of it because it allows the shape to take place. Well, there's the there three key no, elements. There is no Sorry. slate in there is no slate in the cone. And the no. slate comes from the how it looks. Not there is no slate material used in <laughs> no. making the cone. No, no, they didn't use they didn't <laughs> that use would, that. That would take away the three the, the MRD out of the equation. You usually got way too much Ooh. mass. That'd be way <laughs> too much mass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they uh they started working with it and they built a line of speakers called Cora. Uh, around them and if and I will I will say this right now if you have an opportunity to go hear chorus please do so um it's amazing what a six and a half inch two-way bookshelf speaker can sound like um it's stupid I mean the level of fidelity that you get out of these speakers is just tremendous and you know, they've been building these speakers for three years, a little over years. And those of us on the car audio side of things, we're going, you know, that's all well and good and fine. This sounds absolutely fantastic. But why the hell don't we have this cone material in speakers for us? Because we know what this sounds like. We can sell the hell out of this. And they listened, finally. <laughs> and we get two pair of speakers. We get a six and a half inch component. And we get a six and a half inch coax. And I know Grant's heard them. And they, I've sound, them. they sound almost too good. Yeah. For, for the price point they are at, they, 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 they are dangerously close to sounding as good as the flax. Yes. And, yeah, they, and they sound therein fantastic. lies the problem. And it's a good problem. It's a very good problem to have. But this is where those of you who are dealers or you're thinking of becoming dealers and you are going to be ordering slate fiber and flax and K2 power and Utopia. Let me explain something. Those of you who are not used to doing top down sales, you need to learn how to do top down sales. Because if you place somebody a slate fiber comb speaker 
first. And you take them and you try and tell them we're going to upsell you to flax. It's not going to happen. Because the difference between slate fiber and flax, it's there. And you can hear it. But is it worth X amount of dollars extra to go here? And I will tell you, nine times out of ten, people are going to say no. Slate fiber is good enough. That's what happens when you try and do upsells versus top down. Because the top down, everybody gets an opportunity to hear Utopia. And, of course, they 99%, 90% of them are going to say, I can't afford that. And you go to K2 Power, you know. And they go, well, that's not quite as good as this. No, it's not. And by the time you get to slate fiber, you know, you've disappointed your customer. And that's the one thing that I was taught years ago selling the high end. You want to disappoint your customer, which I thought was insane. I don't want to disappoint yeah, my customer. Tell them what they're going to lose. That's it. <clears throat> you want to. People don't like to lose. They don't like to lose. People, and, you, and when you start taking things away from people, who likes things taken away from them? Nobody. You take a rattle away from a baby, he's going to throw it at you. People don't like to have things taken away. So when you start taking levels of fidelity away from people and you get down to slate fiber, they're madder than hell because, well, you let me listen to K2 Power and you let me listen to this. It doesn't sound anything like this. No, it doesn't. But guess what? This is still pretty damn good. Yeah, and what happens is nine times out of 10, you either sell flax or you sell K2 power. Whereas if you start with slate fiber, guess what? Nine times out of 10, that's what you're selling, slate fiber. That's not a bad thing. You made a good sale, but you could have sold K2 power or you could have sold this. Because I will tell everybody here that once you hear this, once you have an opportunity to listen to the Utopia M's in a vehicle, and I'm going to stress this, in a vehicle, tune correctly. There is nothing like it. I don't care where. I don't care who. There's nothing like it. Okay. The line itself, there. <clears throat> It's, it's very simple and easy. Uh, right here, you look at the uh, the TDMs. These are, like I said, extremely revealing tweeters. They're over 95, you know, they're 95 dB at one watt, you know, 1,500 to 50,000 hertz. That's amazing technology. And I can tell you, there's very few tweeters in the world that match the fidelity of these things. And when you make that tweeter, with any of the mid ranges or mid bases within this product line, magic happens. Um, you know, you hear things within the music that a lot of things, a lot of times you've never heard before. And I hear this constantly from dealers who first come on board. They get a six WM, they, they get TDMs. They hook a four channel amp with a DSP up to it, tune it. And then I get a phone call invariably and say, I have no idea this instrument or this was in this music. Oh my God, that's amazing. I hear it all the time. You know, it's, and again, you take a look at these speakers. The engineering behind these is extraordinary. Um, that's a 6WM and that is damn near a four inch voice call on a six and a half inch driver. Who in the world well, think about doing something like this. And you stop and think about the amount of control that that voice call has over the driver. Okay. Because what you're looking at right here, you see the indentation in that speaker. Okay. The indentation and you see the outline of the ring of it. That's where the voice call is. That's how the voice call is attached to that cone. Exactly. So you stop and think that's a, Four inch voice call versus a one inch or a one and a quarter inch voice call. How much power can this thing handle? How much heat can this thing dissipate? And how much control does the voice call have over the driver itself? Yeah, you're looking at 40 to 50% more surface area that that voice call has control over. Over the stiffest, lightest cone utilized in the world today. 
Yeah. The resolution is ridiculous. The power handling on this is insane. The dynamics that come off of this driver are superior in every respect to just about any other six and a half built in this category at this price point. And when you couple it with that tweeter, it's amazing. <laughs> Excuse me. You combine it with the three and a half, which we don't have. We will yeah. have. Uh, it's it's insane. It is. I, I've sat in Keith's, uh, exactly. Keith from Sounds Good truck. He's got the three ways in there, and it's just amazing, amazing, amazing how those speakers sound. Um, <clears throat> yeah, all of the speakers are a la carte. So there's no passive network with any of these speaker systems. So understand, and, and, and I want everybody to understand this, and I really implore you to do this if you're, if you're not already. Um, if you're expecting to sell in profile, become very proficient with the use of a DSP because you're going to need to, because you're going fully active with all the speakers, whether it's the eights, whether it's the sixes, the three and a half, uh, the, the tweeters, the tens, it's all fully active. And with the bandwidth that these drivers have, it makes life easier to tune the car, you know, and, and, and everybody gripes an awful lot about, you know, they're saying that the numbers on these speakers are mis they're, they're misrepresenting it. And I've heard this many, many, many a time. They're saying there's no way that an eight inch driver can actually play to five, you know, can actually play to 5,000 Hertz with this eight WM does right here. Um, it can, yes, it can. And it does. And I will tell you, it does. Okay. And that's off axis. That's before it starts to roll off or it starts to beam. Now, I'm not saying that the driver doesn't start to beam in the 2,000 or 3,000 hertz range. I'm not saying that. But I will tell you, the off-axis response to this speaker is damn near ruler flat to 5,000 hertz. Now, Nick, why is that important? Who gives a rat? Well, when you're putting an 8-inch driver in the bottom of a door and you're sitting in the driver's seat, you're sitting 50, 60 degrees sometimes off-axis to that speaker. And you've got a tweeter in the A pillar. Yeah, the tweeter can play to 2,000 hertz. That mid bass driver can play to 5,000 hertz. How much easier is this going to be to make this work from a phase coherency than you've got a six and a half or an eight that plays to 2K or 1600 hertz or 1500 hertz and it falls on its face off axis? That's called engineering. That's called design work. That's called sitting in the car for hundreds of hours designing these things because, let's face it, they know the environment that we have to work in. And it's the most terrible environment to try and make something sound in is a car. So the engineers designed as much help into this as they can for all of you installers. And I will just tell you flat out, you take a look at this speaker, you hand it to anybody and they're sold. I don't care who it is. I don't care. I've, I've done it more times than, than I care to think about. But you take that 10 or especially an AWM, you put the AWM in somebody's hands. And here's a shallow mount speaker that placed a 45 freaking hertz in the door. Are you kidding me? That's a cool thing, too. If you got room for the fit an eight, it's damn near the same depth as the six and a half. Yeah. You want, you want some mid bass up front? You can get this if you get the eight inch in there, depth is not an issue. Yep. And I will tell you right now, um, if you can get if you can get the client to let you put two of them in the door and you do it correctly. Yes, sir. It is magic. It is amazing. <laughs> now, the last thing we'll talk about as far as utopias are concerned is the 165 WXP. Now, this is the entry level product into into Utopia. Now, the first thing you're going to notice, it is not an in-profile cone. No, it's not. This is a standard cone, just like you would see in K2 Power or the older Utopia drivers. Now, I will tell you that this is a more advanced speaker than the old uh, 165W that we had. Um, it's, it is more efficient. It handles a little more power. It plays lower. It plays cleaner as far as the mid-bass is concerned. The tweeter is a different tweeter. It's an in-profile tweeter. Um, 
it, it plays from basically, as you can see, all the way to 40,000 hertz. You can cross this tweeter over at about 2,500 hertz or the 24 dB proactive slope. That's not if you want to go fully active, but it does come with a passive network. Um, and I will tell you, if you want to use the passive network, please do. Um, it really sounds amazing on a board. If you want to have something you can do top down sales off of, use the WXP. Okay. K2 Power, when you take a look at it, um, not a whole lot in the last six years has changed. Seven years, six years, seven years has changed. Um, it's still the go to speaker when you're listening to EDM and rap and hip hop, techno, speed metal. This is it. And you got folks that want it to sound like the club, that it sounds like live rock music. Um, these are them. This is the speaker for you. They are extremely efficient. They handle a buttload of power, as, as Chris Pate says. Um, you know, I cannot say enough about these drivers. They've been around. I mean, this is a cone material that's been around since 1984. And they keep refining it and making it better and better and better. And I can tell you without the shadow of a doubt that the next iteration of this, and there is a next iteration of this, we're pretty sure there is going to be a new, yeah, this is going to be something special. Um, and that's about Careful. all Grant and I can Careful. tell you. Careful. Huh? Yeah, I know. Careful. That's about all we can tell you. Um, it's an amazing sounding systems, depending on what you want. Uh, the KX3 is, you know, that's the top of the line. If you're doing a three and a half in the tweeter and the A pillar, six and a half in the door, and you like your music loud, dynamic, powerful, this is what you want. If you take a look, you can see that housing comes with the KX3. It is the perfect airspace for the, uh, the three and a half inch mid range. Uh, the tweeter fits right into it. Um, they are left and right. It's real easy to do a left and a right with them. Um, you can incorporate it onto the top of your dash. You can incorporate it into the A pillar. Uh, you, I know a dealer, there's a dealer of mine that has a demo car that he incorporated uh, not only a KX3 in the front, but he put a KX3 on the rear package, package tray of his car. Uh, pretty impressive. I don't mind telling you. Uh, power handling on that driver is on that set as speakers is is basically it's 120 watts nominal 240 watt peaks. If you've got a 200 watt per channel amplifier and you tune it correctly, have at it. Um, knock yourself out. Um, I will tell you as we're going to do a little blatant advertising here for Moscone while we're at this. Um, my buddy in College Station, Chris Pate. Chris likes to take KX3s and he likes to put a, a, I hate to say this. He likes to take a five, a pro 530 and bridge it to three channels, puts one on the left speaker, puts one on the right speaker. So, so 120 watts in the tweeter, 240 watts in the mid range, 580 watts in the mid base. Thank you so very much for playing. Is this cash or charge? It's amazing what that system sounds like. And it's that flexible, and it, and it really can just, it's amazing what these things sound like. Those two subwoofers, now, let me let me talk about these for just a few minutes. The 25KX and the 30KX, they have the exact same motor. They have the exact same voice call, okay? You're going to notice power handling on one is 1,200 watts, the other one is 1,600 watts. Whoopee. Um, let me tell you something. You put these in the right enclosure and you give them a thousand to fifteen hundred watts each. Um, you're peeling paint if you want to. Because these things have a tremendous amount of throw to them. Um, the power handling is through the roof. One cubic foot seal on a 25KX in a truck is three dB down somewhere around 35 hertz. You put two of them, it's 28 hertz. You put three of them, it's 25 hertz. And if you're a friend of mine who's insane, you put four of them and you put a Pro 110 on each one and it's 22 hertz at 4,000 watts. Yeah. 
it's it's a lot of fun. It's amazing what they can do. Flax Evo, we've talked about right here. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to put the slide up there for the for the different levels of the six and a half. So we've got the six and a half inch three way. You've got the the top uh, top line FXE two way kit. Then you've got the FE kit, which you you, you go down to a, a less expensive crossover. Yeah. And then you've got the shallow mounts for those guys that have to go shallow. But I just wanted to show the the, the difference on there. What I did want to spend a little more time on because they are new to the Canadian market is the uh, slate fibers. Slate fiber. So. Okay. <clears throat> um. All right, so as you can see, they look different. And yes, this is the reason they're called slate fiber because it really looks like slate. It's damn near the exact same color. Um, this is a tech, I, I think this is a technological breakthrough um, from Focal. I said it about flax, but I, I and, and this too, the level of fidelity that you get from these speakers at this price point is insane. I mean, Grant's right. They are really, really close in the performance against Flax. Um, I am a huge fan of a gentleman by, the, his name is Stanley Clark. And Stanley Clark is one of the consummate jazz musicians in the world. And when I had an opportunity to listen to one of my favorite songs by him in a car that we had that had separates up front, had coaxes in the rear, and yes, we were cheating. Um, we had a Raven 12-inch subwoofer in the car, and we had a lot of Moscone power on. But I'm sitting in this car, and I'm literally tuning the car with the DSP because we were fully active with everything. When, we, when I got through with it, I forgot that we were working and I sat in the car for an hour and I just listened to this album and I was amazed by what I heard. The level of fidelity at this price point is insane. I sat there and I tried to, I literally tried to nitpick it. That's the first time I've ever heard them. It was back in March of this year. And I was listening to the textures and guitars and I was listening to how you could hear his hands going up and down the fretboard. And it got to the point to where you knew that this was going through an amplifier that was using tubes. And I mean, his guitar amp. That's the level of fidelity that I was getting out of this system. You don't hear that in systems. I mean, these speakers, it, it's it's like 11, about $1,100 for all, you know, for both pair installed. Well, they're 450 US for this, the components, right? So they're going to be about 600 bucks Canadian. Okay. It's, so, yeah. it's incredible how good these speakers sound for that kind of money. It's amazing. The, it, you, I mean, I, it made me go drag some stuff out that I haven't listened to in a long time that I used to when I was a, when I was an Iaska judge in the nineties, um, you know, I, there was an awful lot of music that we would judge to and listen to. And I dragged some of it out and I was listening to it and I was literally in there judging the car. And I was like hearing things that normally you would hear coming from flax, coming from Kevlar utopia coming out of these and I was floored um, and, and, and to the point to where I was at sitting there listing these and I'm like, you know, my wife just bought a brand new car and we just might put this in her car, you know, and it's not as if my wife's not a pain in the butt audiophile because she is. I mean, my wife played flute in high school. She was really, really, really good. And she really likes her music. And I knew that she would really like these because of the way they sounded. They're very neutral. They have the ability to bring the emotion out of the music, unlike anything at this price point I've ever heard. And that's the big selling point on these things. You can get emotional 
listen to these things. I see you, so man. I, I came in at this moment because I have to share some input and feedback that I've had. So there's nothing I could really speak to when it comes to the Utopia M's, the K2 Power, the Flax. I think everything I had to ask you already answered. Let's just focus real quick on these new slate fibers, okay? okay. Uh, I don't know if we talked about it. I didn't hear it. But like the slate fiber cones were introduced in the home series quite a few years ago already. Yes, the, that's correct. These cones have been blowing up like two channel, like people are freaking out on the affordability and the sound. So uh, yeah. for those who knew, it's like, ah, finally, they have them for a car. Great. The feedback that I had so far, you said it a little bit. I'm going to emphasize that a little bit more. It is, I think, I think Focal is a victim of their own success on this, but this is what it is. That gap that existed previously from the series that was under Flax, uh, which is Polyglass, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So yes. let's say that was the difference. That was the delta. Well, yep. slave fiber, from what I understand, that delta is about that. So, I mean, that's two ways to look at that, right? So incredible yep. value for slate fiber. What does it mean for flax? Well, and again, that's where you have to do your top-down sales. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot because this is where mm -hmm. the level of – and I agree, Focal may have shot themselves in the foot here. But the level of fidelity between the two of them is extraordinary. And you have to be able to tell your customer what to listen for between the two of them because they're close. Is yeah, you want to definitely better? want to control the demo for sure. You want to, yeah, you want to have, mm -hmm. if you just turn them on and let it turn them on, and let a customer go, he's going to pick the slate fibers for sure. Just because. Yeah. He's, he doesn't know what he's listening for. Or, and if I'm not mistaken, you haven't explained what to listen for. For clarity, the slave fiber is actually quite efficient. You don't need a ton of power for them to no. perform. No, because I look you, at the I look at the two channel stuff. I mean, these guys are running tests off like integrated fifth, two by fifty amps on on you know six and a half yes. feet bookshelf. Yes. Yeah, you can run 50, 60 watts a channel. You'll never use it. You'll never get there. You probably use 15, 20 watts maximum continuous. Power. Another check, another check right there. Efficient. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a small, you know, a small amplifier uh, that's built really well, um, yeah, I mean, you don't have I mean, to have a ton of power. Yeah. What do you think of a, a Moscone 530 two way active with a, with a sub? Yeah, should be just fine. Work just perfectly well. Beautiful. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, finally. Finally, here, here's my last question, and we'll wrap it up here. Um, right. You know, one thing that Focal does really well, and, I, and I'm going to toot their horn on this one, they provide dealers with the tools to be able to do a very, very precise, professional, top-down selling demonstration. Yes. Um, and I think that what the message I want to get across, if you're serious about Focal, and those that have found an incredible success with the brand over the years, they know how to sell it. You need to know how to sell this product. And that, that's my kind of message I want to round this up with. I cannot. Yeah, knowing how to sell it. And they also give you the tools. If you go on to Tidal or Spotify, you can find a mix by Focal 1, 2, and 3, yep. which is basically, they used to have really cool CDs. And even when we weren't a Focal guy, I used to take the Focal disc and go demo whatever brand of speakers we were showing because uh, the quality of the recording was always top notch. So if you want really good demo material because no one carries those little things called cds anymore in their hands um you can go on to spotify and title and cobas mm -hmm. and all those different places and find that that mix by focal one two and three and there's three albums of really really good recorded lots of different variety of music there's country in there there's isn't that an oxymoron though country music um there's a country there's jazz there's there's edm there's a lot of cool stuff on there so yeah, really and good demo beauty, material. And the beauty of that is all of those recordings were mastered on SM9s or SM11s from Focal. There you go. Uh, for those who don't know what that is, those are Focal Pro active speakers for studio. Yes. Uh, Nick, brilliant. Can't thank you enough. I don't know of anybody on the planet that could speak to Focal like you do. So we certainly appreciate you being here today. And uh, no, appreciate it. Sure, thank you. All right, take care now, Mr. Thanks, Grant. Yes, sir. I'll take we'll care. see you. In a, we'll see you next week. Well, there you go. Yes, sir. You just let me know. See you, ready. New stuff. Take care, guys. Take care, Mr. Grant. I want to give sir. the people um, the information. So, if you're interested in finding out more about Focal, 
there's the information, fullcal-america.com, all that technology stuff, the cone materials, all that stuff that Nick talked about, uh, you can find in the specifications on fullcal-america.com. And for the first time I'm putting this ever on CMA Networks, if you're interested and you're a Canadian dealer, give the folks at Trends Electronics a call, trendsinc.com. All right. Thank you, Grant. Good luck with that. I know there's obviously a lot of hurdles and challenges to overcome whenever there's a new product, you know, switching hands. But uh, I think we have the, you, you know, confident that trends will pull it off with grace and professionalism. The good news is it seems like it's uh, on its way to us uh, by the end of this week. Uh, so inventory in Canada will will have about 400 grand worth of inventory in Canada, and we've got another big big order being placed with France today for all the made in France products. So Just, you know, be... I live on the East Coast. So if it's more convenient to ship to me first and then oh, sort it's, out. It'll, 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 it's going to sail right past your place. Oh, okay. Fine, fine, fine. It's going, <laughs> it's going straight past you into Quebec. There you go. <laughs> thanks a lot, Grant. Okay. Thanks, guys. Take care. Yeah. All right. Awesome. That was Focal with both trends as well as, uh, of course, uh, Nick Wingate himself. And I wanted to have a couple of reminders. We've got Audio files all month long, every day, another brand. Tune in, CMA Networks, 12 o'clock every single day. And if you haven't heard about this, I don't know where you've been, here's your chance to win a trip to Master Tech Expo on us. All you got to do is head over to our website, cmanetworks.com slash giveaway. Sign up. We're giving away one trip for an American and one for a Canadian. And that is the long and the short of it. What's So thanks for tuning in to this CMA Connected presented by Sirius XM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time. We connect. Yeah, Roll it down. I am. You don't need a car to listen to Sirius XM. You can listen anywhere. You know that, right? What? Kevin Hart's left on the radio. Kevin, you could use your phone. What? What? Alexa, play Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud radio on Sirius XM. What? This is how I know you're getting old. I guess that was it. What?